So my life is looking pretty different right now than what I expected. And I find it pretty hard to just be okay with that. So this week I set myself a challenge to do some stuff that I've been putting off and to implement some mindset changes that will hopefully make me feel like I've kind of hit reset on my life and get me to a point where I can stop thinking about what could have been or what should be happening right now and instead focus on what I can actually do with the time that I have. And because I like to be a little bit extra with my planning and my presentation and everything, I decided to turn it into 21 things to do to reset my life and get me ready for the 2021 I did not think I was going to be having. We hear this all the time. I cannot wait for life to go back to normal. Well, I hate to break it to you, if you're sitting around waiting for life to go back to normal, you are going to waste so much time that you are never going to get back. Now, I know that just functioning is a major accomplishment for so many of us right now. But if you're looking at your life and you realise that you're basing your potential for happiness on future change, like, I don't know, I'll be happy when, or I'll be happy if this, then you're just never gonna be really content with life. And I know that because that is how I have lived most of my life. I always used to say to myself, I'll be happy when I leave school. I'll be happy when I graduate university. I'll be happy when I finally get this job. And you know what? All I actually did was focus on some future potential happiness that wasn't even guaranteed and completely neglect doing anything to make myself happy in my present moment or my present situation. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have goals or ambitions or a vision for your future, but don't pass up potential happiness now because you're so focused on future happiness that may not even happen. Do what you can to make something of the present, even if it looks absolutely nothing like what you imagined it to. On that note, express gratitude for something every day. And I know. This sounds disgusting, I get it, but there is something to this gratitude malarkey. I have spent so many days sitting in my room convincing myself that nothing has gone right for me and I have nothing going for me in life right now. And then when I actually forced myself to be grateful for something, I realized how much I actually have and how lucky I am. I am healthy, at least mostly. <laughs> I have a really great family that's helping me through all of this. I have access to the ocean and to nature. I mean, I live on a freaking cliff. How cool is that? And of course, of course, I have Stanley. If this year has taught us anything, it's that relationships come in so many different forms. Distance can really make or break your connection with someone and going through such an emotionally difficult time can highlight the people in your life who are really there for you when you need them. Now is the time to assess your relationships and figure out who gets the chop because let's face it, not everyone is bringing good things into your life. And also assess where you should be putting in more effort, who you need to be contacting more, who you need to be showing appreciation to and what things you can do to show the people who are important in your life what they mean to you. This has been a huge learning curve for me and I've actually even gotten over my irrational fear of phone calls for some very special friends and I really hope they appreciate it. Clear out your digital devices, do it, people. I cannot tell you how much better it feels. I recently went through my phone and deleted a bunch of stuff that I didn't need, um, moved stuff around, and now I finally have free space to create new things. I don't have constant notifications from apps that I don't even use. I don't have emails coming through from businesses trying to get me to buy things I don't need. It feels so much better and I find myself so much less distracted when I'm doing work now because there's not random things popping up all the time that don't actually mean anything to me. And I'm not getting warnings about not having space that's stressing me out about all the things that I'm gonna have to delete and things I'm gonna lose, just do it. And while you're there, 
declutter your social media as well. Unfollow people who don't make you feel good, unfollow people who are putting negativity out into your life, who are pushing you to do things or buy things that you don't need or that you don't resonate with. Just get rid of them. You don't, you don't need that in your life. Once you've decluttered, set social media limits. Now, I didn't even know that you could use your phone to set limits on the amount of time you spend on apps. And I wish I had because mindless scrolling has probably robbed me of years of my life at this point. And honestly, I do not need that anymore. Back up your files, children, please. If you take one thing from this video, back up your files. I didn't even realize how stressed I was about the amount of work I would lose if my phone or my laptop were to just break. And now that I have it all safe, I feel so much lighter, especially if you're like me and you do a lot of work online and work with a lot of digital files, back it up. You'll feel so much better after you do. While you've got your computer handy, maybe you should also look at your money and see if you need to be swapping to more ethical banks. Now, this is something that I feel really passionately about, but that I have been putting off like a hypocrite because I didn't have permanent addresses or I was building up a credit score or I didn't know what was going to be happening in my life and didn't want to take risks with new banks. But no excuses anymore. I have no reason not to. So that is one of my major things that I've been doing. I'm going to be leaving resources down below all about ethical banks if you want to learn more about it. And while we are here, it's a pandemic. Things are scary. Work is hard. Nothing is guaranteed. You need to face your finances head on. Look at your expenses. Cancel any weird subscriptions that you didn't even know you had. Look at where the bulk of your money is going and ask if it's really necessary. I mean, I'm not here to judge, but if you're buying 200 pounds worth of takeout a week, then maybe we need to have a little conversation about that, right? Right? And while you're there, note down all your streams of income as well. Note down what you're earning from and how and make sure that you are putting your energy into the right places to get you money and to keep you afloat during 2021 because this is going to be a really scary year following on from one of the worst financial years ever so just do it deep clean your spaces it's like painful for me to say this because trust me no one hates cleaning more than me. No one is worse at cleaning than me. But it does make a huge difference. And I can tell you, I feel so much more ready to work when I'm entering a space that has been cleaned and is all fresh and ready to go. It feels so good. So just do it, get over it, deep clean it all. And then we can think about it again in 2022, right? Cluttered spaces lead to a cluttered mind. And maybe you are one of those people who can thrive in clutter. And if so, you are terrifying. And I do not know how you do it. I'm not sure you're even human. I definitely cannot. <laughs> so I like to periodically go through my stuff and just let go of things that are no longer serving a purpose, that aren't bringing me any value into my life and that other people might really enjoy to have. So you can sell things that you don't want anymore. I like to use Vinted to sell things within the UK. I've got a bunch of stuff going up there soon, so I'll leave a link in the description box if you wanna check that out. But if you don't need extra money, then donate it. I'm sure there's someone out there who needs access to that item or who would just love to have it. If you're like me and you're finding yourself with a bit of extra time right now, then maybe it's time to really start planning those projects you've been putting off. I find the easiest way to do this is to just write the title of the project out and have a complete brain dump of all of your current ideas. Once everything is written down on paper, I find it so much easier to start sifting through those ideas, categorizing things and actually making steps forward in the, pro in the project. I did this with my friend the other day online for a project we're working on together and I feel so much lighter and so much more ready to actually tackle this project now. I can't even tell you. I'd love to give you details about the process, but this project's definitely going to be the topic of a future video, so maybe we'll go through it then. P. 
people always talk about making these goals and resolutions for the new year. I hate it personally, I feel I never achieve them and I just find them really overwhelming. So what I've been looking into more and more lately is the art of tiny habits. Now this is basically when you pick one very small thing that you can do that can over time flourish and grow into a bigger productive habit. For me it is I want to read just one page of my book every single day. It's so manageable that I really feel I have no excuse not to do it and already I find myself going above and beyond that just because I've already started so why not? How I start my morning often sets a precedent for how my day is going to go and how my morning goes is usually defined by how I spent the night before. So for me creating a solid nighttime routine is so important to productivity. Currently, it's probably the thing I'm struggling with most because all I want to do at night is lie in bed and watch anime. And sometimes I gotta just smack myself out of that, be an adult, focus on my productivity and put the anime away. Um, but it's a work in progress, so I'll try to get down to anime nights maybe like two times a week. Maybe. I know. You think I've lost my mind, but I needed this reminder. So if you also need this reminder, change your toothbrush. I bet it is nasty. I hate doctor's appointments. I hate dentist appointments. I hate anything where I need to talk to someone about my own body or make an appointment or act like an adult. I hate it. But it's tough, we have no choice. Our bodies are so important. They take us through life, they allow us to do everything. They are our homes, we need to look after them. So make a list of all of those important appointments that you've been putting off booking and start inquiring about them. I know at the minute you might not be able to get them all booked in and that is totally fine, but you might be able to get appointments for a few months time or you might actually talk to a doctor and realize that what you've been putting off is considered quite important and they actually want you to come in now. So just do it. Talk to your medical practitioners, see what you need to get sorted. And while we're here talking about your body, you are going to be spending a lot of time with yourself, both now and in the future. So why don't you take a little bit of time to just fall in love with yourself? And I know it sounds gross, I get it, <laughs> but it is important. Your relationship with yourself and your body is like every other relationship in your life. You need to invest time into it. You need to be kind. You need to be willing to spend time to develop it and to let it grow. And if you don't, it's just gonna die. So spend time with yourself. Say kind words to yourself. Take yourself on a date. Introduce yourself to your parents. Gush about yourself to your friends. You know the deal. And it's not even just our physical bodies that we have to look after. We have to look after our mental health. I know, how much work are we expected to do before we can be considered full functioning adults? But it is important. If you have been dealing with something and you've been putting off getting help, now is the time to do it. If you've been thinking about seeing a therapist and you have the means to do so, do it. If you need to open up to someone, do it. I get it, it sucks. I can't even cry in front of my own mother. I understand you, but it's, you we just have to. We have to start removing this stigma around mental health, both for ourselves and others. And if you want to be there for other people in your life, then the best thing you can do is start opening up about your own struggles. While you're wondering about things to do with your spare time, maybe you can start highlighting gaps in your knowledge, whether that be to do with public issues or issues within your chosen field of work. Maybe you need to diversify the voices in your life or the experiences you are exposed to. Maybe there are certain perspectives that you've been shutting down or that you haven't fully explored yet. It's so important that we understand gaps in our knowledge and that we start to address them. And some ways to do this is to start diversifying your reading list, whether that be fiction or non-fiction. Start finding documentaries that explore parts of the world or ideas or concepts that you've not really been open to before. Um, find online educators or content creators, course creators, who are specialized in a field that you haven't really had much exposure to. 
it's 2021 and we definitely need to start not only acknowledging gaps in our knowledge and in our experience that at least in my case generally come from a place of privilege but to actually start exploring them and educating ourselves and becoming better global citizens. Start taking note of the things you were doing well. This can be as little as writing a daily to-do list and including making your bed. And then when you make your bed, tick it off and see that success written down on paper. These successes will only really grow in time if you really believe in self-celebration. Act cocky, tell yourself you're fabulous, reread your successes like they are a best-selling novel. And if you have someone in your life telling you that you shouldn't be celebrating these small things, then they have issues and you don't need that. Now I know I said we're living in the now, being cool, taking the present, but that doesn't mean you can't have goals for your future. Now I know that career isn't the most important thing to everyone, but to me at least, it is a really important part of my life. Actually probably the part of my life I am most excited about. So if you feel the same, start researching your ideal career. Start looking up job profiles, start looking up um, essential criteria for the kind of roles you wanna get into and start visualizing what your dream career is gonna look like. Make yourself a vision board, write it all down, carve it into the bodies of your enemies. I don't really care. Whatever works for you to start getting that visualization, just do it. Then start thinking about what you can do today to start working towards that. It doesn't have to be something complicated. For example, I want to work in wildlife sanctuaries, so I know I need to be physically fit. So I'm just working on doing something every day that keeps my body moving. If you want to have a little video all about how to keep your CV active over lockdown, particularly in wildlife work, then let me know. I am more than happy to do that because it is something I have been working hard on lately. The final thing is probably going to be the hardest for a lot of people. And that is that you need to get real with yourself. You need to figure out what it is you want from life. Now, often when we're growing up, we are taught to believe that a certain lifestyle, a level of financial security, maybe a house or like, I don't know, like an allotment is the life you should be going towards. And then on the other hand, you see all these people on social media who are living these crazy lives and doing adventurous things all the time. And you think that maybe you should be doing something more like that. And you start to feel bad that all you really want is like enough money to buy yourself a blanket and feed yourself cake, which is fine. It's, if that's what you want, that's fine. It has to just be what you want. So while you have maybe less physical influence around you from others, take a step back from social media as well and start thinking about what it is your heart is really drawn to. What do you want from life and what is going to make you happiest? Do the same as the career goals, make some sort of vision board, figure out what kind of lifestyle is calling to you and then start working on that today and enjoy the process of getting there. It can be so hard to figure out what you actually want versus what other people have made you think you want. So really take the time to assess that. Lockdown sucks, like really, and I know it is necessary. I am not against going into lockdowns and I know so many people have it way worse than me right now. I'm really lucky in my position. I'm very aware of that. But other people's experiences do not invalidate your feelings. And if you are feeling stuck or like you're struggling to deal with this new reality that's just been thrown on you this year, then maybe try one or two, even everything on this list and just see how it makes you feel. See if it gets you into more of a mindset where you feel able to deal with your current situation. Besides, if you're just kind of sitting at home, feeling like a lemon, what have you got to lose, right? Let me know how you're coping with lockdown and I will see you next week for episode three.